Oh, oh you doing romance, mate? Oh, you should write a book on it, couldn't you? Oh, I, I, I am writing a book. <laughs> Ten tips on how to get a great, horrible boyfriend. Yeah, yeah. Say, not a great one. A I must have stupid written on my forehead. Why? Why not? They don't give a damn about you, really. They just, you know, they go out with the mates and they say you, they love you and all this, but as soon as they're out on time with the mates, that's it, you know, they're cheating on you and that's basically what I can't deal with, you know. That's why I look after myself. I don't, I don't need a guy to, you know, depend on. Men are a mystery to me, to be honest with you, but um, I think maybe it's because um, I like to be rowdy, have a few drinks and centre of attention. Like, look at me, I'm over here, you know what I mean? Um, that's being nice, isn't it, really? Wayne and Stav have been mates since childhood, and if you did try and come between them, you could end up getting squashed. It's hard to find somebody who likes the same sort of things, you know what I mean, like enjoyment and that. I found somebody who pissed off, like, I'd, it was like a, a big thing out of my life, you know what I mean? Be a, a, a good mate out of my life. It's like having a girlfriend. <laughs> well, not, you know what I mean, like, sort of having a girlfriend, and like, she, you end up be split up and things like that. That's like what a mate is as well. A good mate, anyway, that's what I think. Oh, Wayne and Stav both have checkered love lives. Stav's divorced and things are rapidly reaching crunch point for Wayne and his long-suffering girlfriend, Tracy. Yeah, but your hardest thing is you're working away all week, isn't it? You've got to work down there, put brass, or wherever it be. That's what you want to be doing, you know, coming back and like spending some time with Trace, especially you've got now you've got house. Oh you've yeah, got, what? Yeah, but you've got no excuse, have you, to go out? Yeah, but I'm 31 now. I just got back with my girlfriend. i like, uh, we were split up for about six months, and like, I've just bought an house and everything now, so I've got something to show for me working away and everything now. He might have a house, but he doesn't seem to spend that much time there. Yeah, you know I mean, but, like sometimes she'll just put her foot down and say, "Look, Wayne, I want time with you." You know what I mean? Like, she, and, I can understand that, can't you? I know sometimes I, 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 do, I do go over the top and I push it. What do you mean sometimes? Then you've got to, you've got to think about the night, the good nights out with us. You know what I mean? <laughs> Which, well, where do you start? I would just like. It's men's talk over the green bays. Oh, Stay there, you. Come on, man. And it's girls' talk over the steak au poivre. Unsuspectingly. Yeah, yeah. But you've got to be careful yeah. about oh, yeah. the sort of calibre of men who you're actually associating uh, with. That's right. I'm not looking for a partner, don't get me wrong, I'm not looking for a partner. But there's no way I'd ever be with an, an old older man. person. An no old way. Man. I just, I just find it older, repulsive. Mean older than you. What bothers me is when they get older and they get the prosthetic problems, I'm not being cruel. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not. They do. No, no. They get prosthetic And everything, like with a woman, me. drops. Wow. Yeah. They get that older smell. <laughs> they do. They do. I'm not being cruel, but they do. I like a man to be a man. I like him to have some intelligence, to be able to hold a conversation and sort of be worldly, to know what's going off in the news and in the world and things like that. Politeness. It's a good sense of humour. Not offended too easily, definitely not offended too easily. Hairy? No. Don't like hairy men at all. No. No. I don't think people realise, especially a family, how hard it is for her to get up there and go out and do it. But if she sat in the house, she would end up a wreck. And she does not want to become a wreck. She wants to carry on living life to the full, as she would have done if her husband had still been here, which I would have liked to have met him, but I never did. Chris has lost a husband, but Leslie's gained a friend and a new confidence. She's been married twice, divorced twice, and her social life had taken a knock. I never had any friends when I was younger. I was always me and my other half. I feel I missed out. If I met somebody, I would say to them, look, this is my best mate, and I want to have at least one night out a week with her. Yeah, but I think... It's yeah. the era that we're living now as well. Yeah. Both men and women are more forward. Yeah, it's very blasé. You're, eh? you're not treating them mm. like that because I'm going to treat you the same as you treat me. Yeah. yeah. There's no embarrassment. Either. No, no, I'm not frightened at all. Not nowadays, definitely not. Women have the attitude of, I'm about to work as well. This is, you're not mm. taking, you're not going to rule me, I'm going to rule you. 
I think everybody's had to change big style. I mean, there's a lot of people where women are working now and men at home. Uh, it's hard to, I suppose it's hard to accept. So I don't think there is a classification for men anymore. Uh, I suppose I'm, uh, I'm these new men. Look at the arse on that. Just an impression of us. Whoa, 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 whoa. Look at the tash. <laughs> Look at the arse. Oh. Look at the arse on that. Typical Friday night. You cannot walk down the street after half past nine without getting some sort of comment shouted at you. Sometimes it's a really nasty comment. Sometimes it can be a cheeky comment, like, you know, look at drugs on that or whatever. And I think, what is the point in that? Why shout that? I mean, it's no good pretending it's like it used to be when men were gentlemen, and they're not these days. You've got to know what to expect. You've got to know what signs to look for. Like, they go around playing games like pull the pig and, you know, stupid things like that. It's a... Uh, and it's a game that they play where, you know, they all go into a, a pub or whatever, and it's who can pull the ugliest woman. Go on, Get out of slappers! Look at them, the other one. You want me to turn around, yeah? No, mate. If you, can pull, if, you, if you mean you can pull them two around, I'll turn around, and we'll go and get them. Well, you'll go and get them, you two, because... What about you? Uh, I'm, I'm all right. Yeah, what about you? No, I'm, I'm all right, me, tonight, that's it. I've had enough, but I'm knackered myself, so... Yeah. I remember one at one stage I, I used to see this young girl and uh, this one when I first started taxiing and uh, her mum and dad weren't too keen on me so we had to find different places to where we can have a dabble. So just past her house there's like a football field. She took me down there, she drove right to the other she could just park here. So we're at it at the front seat and then all of a sudden her eyes went wide open and I thought, oh, are they just moved for you or what? She goes, no, look behind you. So I turned around, and there were a copper with a torch on my ass. It's like last night, I could have pulled a bird in Park Lane. Yeah. She said, you got looks, you got money. And she said to me, will you go out with me? I said, yeah. And put me in, well, spit an image of my ex-girlfriend. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I said, yeah. And that, that were in Park Lane. Yeah. Uh, did, did, she, did she have a guide dog with her? <laughs> <Cheeky twat. laughs> <Cheeky twat. laughs> Stav and Wayne are planning a bit of a night of it, so they're refueling with a bloody hot curry. Stav feels the time is right to tackle Wayne about the marriage you have question. Your discussions, don't you? Like, yeah, you have Trace will tell me more than what she tells you because sometimes you don't want to hear or you're not playing ball or whatever. Yeah, but that 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 is me, that Stav anyway. Mm. I don't I don't think she I don't think she wants to, to marry me. Well, I hope she not, anyway. Just... Yeah, but you've never spoke about it, have you, when it comes down to it? Yeah, actually, we have. Have you? Yeah, I've, and I've asked her a few when? times. Yeah, but if, you, if you've asked her when you've been absolutely bollocks, what's she going to think is she's not going to say, oh, yeah, we. Uh, I want everything, like, when I first started going out about, I want everything to go right, you know what I mean, between us. Oh, I know you did, yeah. You could do your contract somewhere nearer to home that guarantees you that you're home on... I'm not saying five nights a week or all like that. I don't, so, I don't want to be home that many nights. No, I don't know you don't. <laughs> I just want, have we talked about that with Trace? No, I've been little ones. Don't want it, Sam. What, you don't want one now? I've had two kids. I've had one to Tracy and one to another lass when I was younger. But, like, um, the one with Tracy was... He was born three months premature. And, like, he, um, he died in, like... But, like... We're both on the same wavelength at minute, me and Trace, we're not bothered about no kids, you know what I mean? We're just, we're all right, we're just happy, like, going out and enjoying ourselves, and that's what we both want out of life. That's what we both want at the minute. You might, things might change, but they might, I don't, I'm not really bothered me about kids at the minute. How long ago was that, that your child died? <clears throat> May 91, that. Like, eight years ago. I'm sorry. I don't worry. Things happen, don't they, in life? They're here to test you. A thousand people a year get divorced in Doncaster alone. Tez is one of them. He's fathered five kids, but he's got no family. Um, I miss Jordan a lot. He just, he is the youngest of me of my kids. I've not seen him for nearly two years now. Maybe a bit longer. I got one of the letters back. It did say, uh, I've, I've read your letter to Jordan, and 
in this moment in time, he doesn't want to see you. I hope one day you just turn around and say to her, I want to see me, Dad. I got married when I was uh, 18. You know, all arranged for me and everything. And I think that's the only thing that's uh, probably I've regretted, you know, leaving my missus. I've let the, uh, the family down in front of the whole uh, community. That's a, that's a regret now. Group, is it? It's like every age group, yeah. and it looks really tacky. It's awful, yeah. Like everybody, you get, you get the thirst, you get the taste, and you, you think, I, I can take it, I can take it, and you're out with your mates, and they probably can, and you're keeping up with them, and that's what happens. You end up vomiting all over the street, staggering about, just making a complete fool of yourself. Not I, though. But if a bloke came up to you absolutely like that, you think, mm. He'd walk away, wouldn't he? Oh, yeah, and even if he was drop-dead gorgeous, yeah. and you knew him, he'd go, no, sorry, thank you. When they open the mouth and you smell vomit on the bread, which reminds me... Breath freshener. Excuse let's, me. Let's have a piece of chewing yeah. gum. Reminds me, we haven't got chewing gum, so it's breath freshener. Is that dog's bollocks? In love with this kid. The lads face a bit of a dilemma. It's nice. We'll have a few more beers here. Fucking hell, we're a wanker. How are they going to find a nightclub that will let them in? It's a decision which calls for some steady thinking. Women are generally, you know, a lot better when they're drunk than men. We, we cannot, the same men can handle the beer, but I'm sorry, but women can take it a lot better. Some guys, Hi. sometimes you'll go out, you'll kiss three or four guys in a night, and, and you do not get one name. Any blonde that comes up to me, I'm a bit wary of, I'll push them away. I've got no respect for them. I can use them and not think about it. Whereas before I met this person that I was going out with, you know, I had a lot of respect for everyone I met. Now I've, I've changed my opinions completely. What do you mean by this? You can, you can use them? Well, if I wanted the one night stand, I drop them like that. I'm not thinking twice Basically, about yeah. it. Usually, I think I can't do that. That's nasty. You can't use people. It's not right. But if I want one night stand, I use them for one night stand nowadays. You know. We have any emotional attachment. Yeah. Can you do that? I can do that now. Now I can. So I know how little respect blokes have got for me. For me. I had an abortion in February. Um, it was a baby I wanted to keep, but I didn't have anyone to back me up on the idea, so I had to I ended up getting rid of it, feeling that I'd be on my own. My mum came with me to have, so I could have the abortion, because my boyfriend um, at the time couldn't afford to have a day off, he felt. He felt like, you know, money were more important than seeing me through, through that abortion. I haven't brought my wage slip. I bet you brought yours. Chris has brought up two kids of her own. They worry about their mum being out on the town because even the more upmarket night spots can be a bit of a bear pit. I can be taken in very easily. I believe people. Uh, I, I see them and, and, and I think I take them at face value all the time, whereas I should maybe step back and, and assess them and as I would do in, in a sort of professional capacity, really. So, yeah, I think at this moment there is a lot of naivety about me, uh, and other people do, uh, and they get worried for me. And that's why Leslie is so good for me as well. I do watch her a lot. Because if anybody sort of like says the wrong things and 